Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, I, you know, as usual, I'm attempting to advance in many different directions. Uh, in this case, many different directions about children's drawings, but as usual, I'll only try one direction at a time. So, um, so yeah, so I have some big idea in my mind, but uh, okay, I'll go ahead and try that. Um, so, Yes, this is about children's drawings. But first, I'm going to start with a question here. So, a question? I don't know. Um, right. The question is Do you remember an incident about 30 years ago where you were like teaching? This was probably like before I ever physically met you or something like that. But you, um, sort of breathlessly ran onto the internet and, and said, I'm teaching a class in about 15 minutes and I need a uh, good definition of a sign of a permutation because you were having some annoying trouble with a circularity of definition that you were trying to avoid between determinant. Yes, I do remember that. Mm -hmm. And so your question was roughly, you know, can anybody give me a nice first principles, lowbrow, lowbrow, e easy, uh, reasonable definition of what the sign You've of a frozen bottom is? Down. Say it again. I have frozen. Can you hear me? No, I can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So again, we're getting an idea of how good the connection is here. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I have to try to figure out what you heard up to. So, right, we're just- well, I, guess, I remember the incident, yeah, the difficulty of defining the sign of a permutation, knowing that it's well-defined and- in, in particular, the circularity issue with uh, <clears throat> determinant. Uh -huh. uh, so, so, yeah, so, so, so your request was for, you know, reasonable first principle definitions of the sign of a permutation. And people suggested various ones. It's funny, I don't remember anybody suggesting, maybe somebody did suggest it. I guess somebody probably did suggest it, but right there, the sensible thing to do, right, would be to say, well, it's the value of the unique uh, surjective homomorphism or something like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> That's no fair. Sure it is. Um, but, uh, you know, and, 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 and uh, Somebody told you, somebody pointed out to you that, you know, the circularity wasn't really a problem. You could sort of sneakily bootstrap your way up by, you know, defining the, de defining the sign as, as a determinant, but in a, you know, but by first defining a very bootstrapish version of determinant that only applies to very beautiful matrices or something like that. Um, I don't remember that specific uh, way out. There's actually now a math overflow post about this issue uh -huh. that has lots of answers proposed. Sure, sure. And that sort of, I don't even remember most of those, but that's sort of what I look at if I ever need to. Think oh, I it. thought when you said now, I thought you meant some, somebody had posted it or just yesterday or something like that. No, not like that. But, yeah, um, it's continuing to grow. Sure, yeah. sure. So anyway, my contribution at the time was that the sign of a permutation is the normalized parity of the number of uh, orbits or cycles, whatever you call them. And oh, I don't, I don't, I don't remember that one. That's nice. Uh, you know, just normalized in the sense that you know the identity gets even parity no matter what. Uh huh. And then you just uh, so that's like an additive normalization. <clears throat> yes, additive. Uh -huh. If I understand what you mean, yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, that's right. Uh -huh. That's right. Displacement or whatever. Parity displacement. Um, uh huh. 
And so, you know, the little bit of work that I had to do to show that that works was to show that uh, every time you compose a permutation with a transposition, uh, you either slice one of the cycles into two cycles, if the two things you're transposing are in the same cycle to begin with, uh -huh. or else you um, splice the two separate uh, cycles into a single cycle. If, if uh, and so that was my solution. Because I, I mean that you know so so that that little lemma or whatever shows that it's well-defined and homomorphism. Well, it's already well-defined. It just shows that it's a homomorphism or something like right. that. Right. Okay, that's nice. I'd completely forgotten that way out. <laughs> I like that way out. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, uh, so, so, so the point is that this is a fact I was familiar with for a long time, that, you know, composing with a transposition has this effect, but it now, it, 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 it's, it's now being, it, it's, it's now, Amusingly relevant to um, the children's drawings. Uh, let's see, so I'm really going to need to draw some pictures here pretty soon. So, um, uh, so, so let me just make sure this is, screen is working, and, and let me uh, take the screen control or something. So, how does this work? Screen share screen. screen. So you've got the screen is visible now, and does my pen register? Yes, my pen does register. Okay. No, <clears throat> it's fine. So, um, so what am I trying to say here? So, uh, well, so I'm going to slightly generalize that. So. Uh, the idea is this, um, supposing you, well, generalize and then specialize again. So, so the thing that's like very similar to this is supposing you're multiplying uh, a, a permutation that is just one big cycle, Okay. Uh huh. And supposing you're multiplying that permutation by another permutation, and this other permutation is also, I guess, what sometimes people call just a single cycle, but a smaller cycle. Um, uh, you know, so it's, so I, I mean, right? It's got a whole bunch of fixed points. Okay. Yeah. But all the unfixed points form a single cycle. Uh huh. And moreover, they form a sort of sped up version of the original cycle that, that, that cycles everything. You mean that they're like an integral? The no, no, it, 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 it can, it can, the speed can vary. <laughs> so it's just going in the same order, the same cyclic order or something, if that, if that makes sense. Oh, wow, okay. Okay. I so guess you're like, I, you're, you're like yeah. sampling, you're sampling the original cycle at some random times. Okay, yeah, uh-huh, okay. Uh, yes, it's an edited version of it. So, and, and, um, and the question is, what is the result of this multiplication, this composition of permutations? Uh -huh. and, it, and it works pretty much just like the thing when it was a transposition. Um, so for some reason, this makes me think of like plasmids, which are little circular loops of DNA right. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so, 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 right. So let, let me see if I can do an example here. So how about, uh, um, let's say we've got this permutation of our seven element set and then we have this uh sped up thing like uh i don't know a uh let's 
C F. Uh, now I always get confused by conventions and things here, but um, so uh, let me try to write it down this way. If I remember correctly, the way I think it works is if I if 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 I if um, you know I'm going to break that up into like let's see so okay sorry 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 what's going up here all right so what I'm expecting here but I just need to you know choose my conventions carefully enough to get this to work so, so I'm going to cheat a little bit here so what I want is I want to like split the big cycle up into these little plasmids or whatever. Uh, so it'd be like A, B, and then C, D, E, and F, G. Now, if I remember correctly, this will be, be pretty annoying if it takes me more than five or six try. Um, if I think if I if I compose these two permutations, I think I'll get the original thing back. So, and and, and I'm uh, you know again, there's a convention here about which order. Oh, it looks I, like uh, are you? I back turned now? off my video just to get that bandwidth video. better. Yeah. Okay, we'll try that. I'll turn it on if I look interesting. Sure. And there's a. Um, Right, there's a sort of convention issue here about which order you compose permutations. Um, right. I don't even know if I'm doing it the standard way, but so you know, I'm, I'm trying to compose these two permutations together. Uh, so like, A goes to B, and then B just doesn't do anything. So it's A goes to B, and B at the top. At the top, B goes to. A, but at the bottom, A goes to C. So it's A goes to B to C. So it, it looks like it's working, right? But let me, <laughs> let me try a couple more. So uh -huh. at the top, C is going to D, and then D just sits there. At the top, D goes to E, and then at the bottom, E just sits there. At the top, E goes to C, but then at the bottom, C goes to F or something like that. So yeah, so this this one this does work. I'm pretty sure this one does work. Uh, so this is useful for creating some examples of children's drawings, some useful examples of children's drawings, and perhaps some semi-famous examples of children's drawings. Because there's some, I, I, I was I was fooling around with the, with this with this particular kind of children's drawing, and then I noticed that. On the cover of one of the textbooks on children's drawings, they had, they actually had some pictures which were pretty much of this kind of child's drawing. Uh -huh. And um, you know, so apparently there were some semi-famous examples of this form. So, 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 so let me try to draw a picture here of what, of what the, of what I think, of what kind of child's drawing this corresponds to. Okay. So you're using. Two of these three permutations to be the ones in your free group on two generators. And I guess the confusion about which two you're using is very related to the confusion in figuring out <clears throat> which two generators are the how you're identifying the even subgroup. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's so, right. That's so right. You get the screw up once. That's that's right, that's right. Or however many times, right? Um, and um, so yes, so uh, right. So so you have the choice between you know trying to get all the conventions to work smoothly because you really understand exactly how they work, or alternatively, you just make wild guesses and check that it all seems to be hanging together. So, so, so let me try to draw. Let me try to draw what I think this one looks like as a child's drawing, and we'll try to straighten out the conventions as we go along, just by making sure everything kind of is hanging together. Okay. Okay. So, what I think this one will look like 
is um, so I'm using you know two colors of uh, two colors green and red. Green for me is probably zero, and red is probably one, I think. And um, so let's see. So there's three of those cycles at top. So I'll, I, I need red dot at, you know, each edge has a green end and a red end. So I had to put the red at the other end. And then uh, let's see. Uh, I think it's going to be something like this. Let's see. Wait a minute. Let me try to keep the colors working the way I want. So this will be A, this will be C, this will be F. And, um, and this will be B, I think, over here. And then we need a C, D, E over here. This is D and E. And this is F and G over here, I think, like this. So let me put in the green dots at the other ends. So I think that's it, if I didn't screw up. And I'm going to put a point at infinity as a, you know, a perimeter, it's in blue. That's my third color of dot. You're still there, right? Again, I can't see you. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there is useful feedback from seeing it. It's true. It's true. I'll... Um, but if you know, it, it's it's okay. You just have to get used to uh, seeing the black black uh, screen. Um, so I think this is correct. So yeah, let's let's so let's stare at this and see if it's true. It looks like uh, it looks like this permutation at the top is rotation around the red. And this permutation in the next row is rotation around the green. And, and I'm using clockwise rotations. I'm going to have to think about this in a minute. Right now, I'm too busy copying things sure. down even. Sure, sure think about it sure but it's going to make sense hopefully it's going to be pretty easy um and uh and i guess in my conventions i guess this row at the bottom the third row is uh you know just the red followed by the green which should be equal to the, the rotation around the blue in, in the inverse order. But <laughs> and I think that's right. But there are still convention issues that could get us in, in trouble, but I'm, I'm hoping they won't get us in trouble. I'm hoping that it can, you know, you should be able to clearly see in the picture the clockwise rotation around the red, clockwise rotation of an edge around its red vertex, its red end, should be the red marked permutation in the first row. And clockwise rotation of a vertex around its other end, its green end, its green vertex, should be the other permutation. The green, it should be the green mark permutation. I'm confused about lots of things because I've never really thought about this stuff enough. So yes, but like so, like if you look at the green dot right in the middle, yes, so the branch point of order three. Depending on how you count orders, I guess that's the right way to count orders. Sure, okay. Um, well, yeah. What do I mean by that? That mean what I mean by that is like. Well, it looks like it has a triangle thing. Good, good, good. A, yeah. yeah, so there's like a branch cover of the sphere. And if you sit on any point. It must be like cubing, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you sit on any point over the, I mean, I don't know how many sheets there are in the 
covering space, but if you sit on any sheet near that green above and near that green dot, and you walk around, you have to walk around three times to get back where you started from. And are there sheets called A, C, and F? Can we think of them as like sheets? Uh, I guess that's right, but I, I, I rather than thinking them, uh, let me think. Let me think what you're saying. Let me think what you're saying. Uh, sheets. Um, they're kind of like, uh, boy, this is confusing. They're kind of like uh, points in the generic fiber. Now, I'm not sure what number we should use for the generic fiber. It's not zero, it's not infinity, it's not zero, it's not one. But the fiber over some other number, uh, I guess we could identify with these uh, eight, eight, no, seven, seven things. There are seven edges in the picture, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven edges. So does that mean that like if I'm, if I take a point, I'm imagining this picture is like drawn on CP1, the Riemann sphere. Yes, yes. And, so, and then, hold on, hold on. And then I'm saying like, so the green dot I can think of as a point on the Riemann sphere. Wait a minute. Yes. The green dot is a point sitting. Oh. Are there lots of green dots all called zero? So are those all sitting over the point zero on the Riemann sphere? Yeah, so we're in a very special case here. We're in a very special case where the child's drawing is a genus zero child's drawing, which creates perhaps okay. more confusion between the yeah, yeah. total space and the base space. Okay, yeah, okay. Than you have otherwise. Uh, yeah. have so this picture is a picture up in the up. In the CP1. This picture is in the CP1 above. The covering. Space. Yes, that's right. This is this is in the input. This is in the domain yeah, of the Bellian okay, yeah. projection. Okay. Yeah, no, but it's a, I just get I don't want to bring the card over. And so then uh, it's just a, it's a those three and edges just, called A, uh, C, and F. Uh, yes. Uh, like there to be a point. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> So, so all those three edges are basically better. getting mapped down to this. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. taking me forever. Those point edges are all getting mapped down yeah. to the same edge from right, zero to one down. Yes, yeah, the yeah, unit yeah, interval. Yes, the, yes, the unit interval is kind of like the only edge downstairs. All right, thank you. Okay. These are, right. right, this is the inverse, this, right, this is the inverse image of the unit in, in, interval. Right. And then. Under this Bellier projection, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I guess I get it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And and like and, and there is, right? So and and this way of drawing it is intended to be somewhat spare. Um, there are more elaborate pictures that you can draw with it's like a whole triangulation. Um and, and that's like, you know, a Coxeter tiling, an irregular Coxeter tiling for the Coxeter group, you know, the whole re reflection group. Um, and, um, right, so, so, right. So, so this is a very unusual special case where, first of all, it's, it's special because the genus is zero, but second, it's even more special than that because there's just this one blue dot, which we portray as the perimeter at infinity. Uh, and, and, and in particular, that's right. That's that that this kind of example that I that I that I mentioned is is always this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, right? You can sort of see this thing about the right. This this picture is is very much a dramatization of that little story that I told about how the sped up permutation, the sped up cycle cuts the longer slower cycle into these segments um right you can see this you can see this the segments through there right there's like a segment 
right there, and then there's another segment right there, and then there's another segment right there. Right, you see the, the little cycle with the AB, the little cycle with CDE, and the little cycle with the FQ. Uh huh. So, right, this is the general pictorial form of this sort of uh, pattern where you have, you know, the long cycle that's the product of the sped up version with, you know, the sped up version splices these separate things into this one thing like that. I guess I haven't drawn any, I've never like just taken an arbitrary, did we do it? Well, I haven't really practiced myself taking an arbitrary pair of permutations and drawing the children's drawing. Right, so we did I'm practice sort of, it a bit. We did practice it a bit, but, yeah. but I was doing it in a more perhaps clunkier way at that point. And right, well, behind your back, I've been practicing and I've, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing it in slicker ways now, and, and it's probably harder to follow because uh, I'm yes, just, uh, doing it in slicker I ways here. So, um, so, uh, it, it is helpful sometimes to, uh, it, it's helpful sometimes to, to, you know, to, to put in more of the scaffolding. Right, the, the whole triangulation. They call it the canonical triangulation, I think. But you can argue about how canonical it is from different points of view. It's, well, so what am I trying to say yeah. that uh, I have to there are, months. I mean, since there's just this one point at, infi at infinity, there's one uh, blue point at infinity, all well, the I'm other saying, points have to connect to it. But in fact, they connect to it in more than one way. So like the, the one in the middle connects. Yeah like that uh, I, I found that and then south Toronto, this one so connects north. like that this one connects like that um, this one connects like that and yeah, like south that Toronto, it's an apartment. and like that and then these connect like this and, and this one connects yeah, like that outside. and like so that so now yeah, it's hot pocket. You know what the hot pocket is? So that thing that looks like a, like a square or rectangle containing the edge F. Know? Well, there are two square things containing the edge F. Yeah, that's fine. Those are yes. really triangles. They're because so They're really triangles. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. And there are two mirror symmetric triangles. Oh, OK. Either way is fine. Uh, roughly, combinatorially, they're, yeah, mirror, right, so they're a mirror symmetric pair. And that mirror symmetric pair of um, yep, that's it. triangles, where the mirror itself is the edge, the labeled edge F, that's called a lozenge right. by some people, some textbooks. Uh -huh. So this is a this is a decomposition of the complex affine line into seven of these lozenges or 14 of these triangles. But the four, right, the 14 triangles are sort of in uh, right, it's sort of seven good triangles and seven evil ones. The the good ones are the one. Well, actually, I mean the good ones are perhaps the ones where it goes green, blue, red vertexes in clockwise order and the counterclockwise uh, the counterclockwise ones the, the evil ones are the counterclockwise ones except that it might be the other way around um <laughs> if i chose the wrong convention uh -huh. but um yeah i forgot to ask how much will this be so yeah the, the rotation group how the much? even group acts on these lozenges the whole Sorry, reflection five. group acts uh, on the triangle Okay, you know, it flips good ones into evil ones. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. Okay, I need definitely need to think about this more, but okay. Right. I mean, yes, yes. I mean, uh, yes. I mean, I, I, I've, I've, you know, gotten a lot of more chance to think about it, and it, you know. It, it, you get practice, you get used to it, you really, you know, pick up some of the intuition for it. Um, 
So, it, it, right. So, right. You can see. Actually, yeah. So let's <laughs> let's try to check. Let's see. Let's let's try to see this um, permutation down at the bottom. A B C D E F G. Let's try to get that to make sense. Well, first of all, right. This is supposed to be. Right. I mean, I get horribly confused by clockwise versus counterclockwise here, but let me see if I can get it to sort of work here. So the, you can check in the picture that the, the you know, the, the permutation in the first row, which I labeled or marked with red, that's rotation around the red vertexes. And, and you can see that it really does match up. You know, A goes to B, C goes to D, D goes to E, and E goes back to C, et cetera. And, um, So I'm, I'm trying to stare at this picture and I'm trying to see how, you know, in, in a certain sense, you can think of the periphery as being marked by the first seven letters of the alphabet in alphabetical order. But it's a little bit tricky, right? Because there's 14 little segments of the perimeter, but we're supposed to only supposed to count seven of them. So I'm trying to figure out which seven to count. So let me see if I can get it to work. So let's see. So it's like A. Yeah, I think it's going to be, it looks like it's going to be the good ones. It looks like it's going to be, you know, this one, this one, and, and is it this one? And this one, am I doing this right? Just every other one, right? That's it's like a checkerboard coloring, except with triangles instead of. Uh-huh. Cool. Now I'm I'm hoping if we check the letters there that I'm hoping that'll cycle through the alphabet perfectly. So as opposed A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah, so that worked. Whereas, right, I would have gotten my I think I would have gotten myself in trouble if I used the ones without the black marks in them, right? So this would be like A would be over here. And then B would be over here, which would be going backwards or something like that. Yeah, that'd be going counterclockwise. So you see what I'm saying about, <laughs> you have to keep track of the conventions. You get some, you know, maybe you don't have complete mastery of it yet, but you can see that it's easy to believe that you get, get yourself into all sorts of trouble here by just accidentally making a convention choice about the parity that Screws everything up. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you might. Well, I, I, no, I mean, that, 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 yeah, but I it, it's easy even... to believe that the conventions can get you in trouble. It's a little bit harder to believe that if you do the conventions right, that you don't get in trouble. But, but that's also true. Okay, um, I can even believe that the can. That no choice of conventions would get you in trouble. <laughs> hey, so, so, okay, I'm going to erase these black marks now. But the right, there's still this separation into the good triangles versus the evil triangles, the clockwise ones versus the counterclockwise ones, and. Yeah, so now I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm now gonna erase the lozenge boundaries and just leave us with the edges. Uh -huh. Okay, so yep. here, here it goes. So where were they? It was like there, there, there. That's right, <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid of erasing the important ones. So you're, so you're trying to get back to where you were? Yes. In terms of edges. Yeah. Yes. This should be the seven edges. It should be like right. that. Uh-huh. And um, you know, the picture is basically we didn't lose any information. 
This is just a spare way of drawing the same information. Okay. And, and now, you know, so each edge corresponds to a lozenge. And, you know, you just think about rotating the edges around the um, vertexes. And, um, and, and, and it's very easy to see how to rotate an edge around a red vertex or around a green vertex. But when you're trying to rotate an edge around the blue vertex, it's kind of confusing because we don't have the, right? The connections to the blue vertex aren't drawn in. So, you know, the, the, maybe the only way to do it is to... Um, Actually, you should have done it back when... Yeah. We had them. I have a copy of that picture or something, but I'm trying to see like how, if we had all that, <clears throat> I actually shaded it. Yes. I like it. I don't know if you can. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I shaded it in a checkerboard. Yes, that's good. Way. Yes, yes, and and yes, and check it. So ch yes, check and so see like again that you have thing. Yeah. So I was trying. So I should figure out how you rotate one of those edges around the. Let me just see. Let me stare at your picture for a moment. Let's see. It's sort of this top line. Right, right. But maybe I can see it. Oh, oh. So you decided to make the unshaded ones, the good ones. Is that right? A, B, C, D, yeah. F, G. Okay, that's what was confusing. Well, actually, why do you have that? Did I screw up? It might be screwed up. Oh, I could have also screwed up. Let's see. What happened? There's well, there's a light colored one that I ah uh, screwed up here. There's this light colored one here that doesn't have a letter in it. So something weird happened. Yeah, something weird happened. Should I go back to uh, should I put mine back in or something like that? Um, what did I do? Yeah, that's impressive that you somehow managed to sneak in an eighth <laughs> yeah. thing in there. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to redraw my edges here just to see if I can see what's going on. <laughs> All right. And then So you're shading in the ones that I was, no. I'm not sure, it's hard to tell because, because well, of the glitch in your picture. I think I'm, I'm the glitch is in your picture rather than in my picture. Oh, it is. It's weird that I can't see where it is even now. Uh, oh, weird, okay. I'm just going to draw my picture over. Okay. Instead of trying to think about it. Sure, it's, sure. It's, it seems to have found a paradox in mathematics. Right, right, right. It reminds me of. Whenever we find one, <laughs> decide to like ignore it. <laughs> uh, Avoid it. Right. I mean, if you if you always assume that those are just mistakes, then you're going to miss the really interesting. Uh, That's right. Can we do? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. God. I guess one of the things you're also telling me is that. You know, I just casually wrote my little letter labels near the edge, but it's like you're telling me I should have actually consistently drawn them on the yellow side of the edge. Yeah, I guess that would spare you. Yeah, that would 
But that probably has something to do with how I managed to get you confused with your color. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I really don't want to think about, <laughs> about what I did. I want to see, I'm busy, I'm struggling to just draw this thing, so. Right, right. Not screw up this time. Uh, okay. So the okay. So, but you haven't attempted to draw your letters on consistently on the same. Yeah. Well, you haven't. Yeah. Okay. So I yeah, should draw. Yeah, my mine are letters. still mine are still very inconsistent. Some are in white. So which are you yellow. wanting to be like the the good regions, the white uh, ones or the yellow ones? I I, I think the yellow ones, because as I say, the yellow ones go in the nice alphabetical order around the cyclical alphabetical order around the periphery, whereas the the white ones don't go in the right. The the white ones seem to go. Uh, <laughs> what do they do? I think they go. B, A, D, E, C. Uh, yeah, B, A, D, E, C, G, F. Which is a, well, a funny mix, mix up of uh, forwards and backwards alphabetical order. So, I'm, you know, I'm trying not to look at the white ones. I'm trying to look at the yellow ones because those seem to have the alphabetical or the nice consistency of alphabetical order. You know, and, and, and I, right, and I didn't even say right. I mean, again, there's so much confusion for me here about clockwise versus counterclockwise. That right. I mean, part of the confusion is that. When you draw the point at infinity as this perimeter at infinity, that going clockwise around the point at infinity is like going counterclockwise around the perimeter at infinity. Right? I mean, yeah. So that's that's connected with this whole thing about how the right, the third rotation is the inverse of the composite of the other two rotations. And then you have to worry about which order are you doing the two, the, co the composite of the two rotations. And yeah, right. but there's enormous, there's all sorts of traps I can easily fall into here, but I try to just not think about those or try to just make sure that everything is always, is always hanging together in a way that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I did it a great. With great difficulty, partially because like I'm shading the white ones, right? Because they're like right. the ones I don't want to think about, so they're like shading them out, and I'm drawing the letters in the in your yellow ones, which are my white ones. So anyway, I think I managed to somehow not screw up this time. Amazingly, it looks yeah. consistent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, one of the things I do is um. Oh, in fact, sorry, it, let, let, me, let me do it right now, okay? I think I've thought of a way to sort of fix my labeling problem, which is I can call this uh, A, and I call this one the evil doppelganger, I can call it A bar. Okay. And I can call this B, and I can call this one B bar. And the good C is over there, the evil C is over there, right? Doing this right? That's the evil D, the good D. Yep. This is the evil E, the good F and the evil F, the evil G and the good G. So that okay. actually helps me. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, I, I right. I was I, I actually wanted to uh just like erase everything right now, but I guess this is, I guess I won't try to erase everything. I'll just, just leave it like the way it is. And we'll just pretend that we erased it or something. Again, just keep in, keep in mind that you have, you know, you, 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 whatever your aesthetic pre preference is, if you prefer to put in a lot of scaffolding 
or take out a lot of scaffolding. There are ways to do it so that you don't lose information either way, lose or gain information either way. Um, Yeah, and 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 right, and and it, it took me a while to get used to, but again, I got I got used to the idea that this picture really dramatizes that story that uh, we were talking about. That um, you know how the ACF little cycle splices the little segments A, B, C, D, E, and F, G, splices them together into this larger segment, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, is how much of, uh, no. what a, what's special that's making, your child's drawing in the original unadorned style be a tree. Uh, that's, <laughs> I was pretty confused about that, but I think I'm mostly unconfused about that. So I think it's the, I think it's those two things that I said. So first of all, it's Venus zero. Uh -huh. And second of all, there's just one blue dot, uh, which is this, you know, dot at infinity, which we draw as the perimeter at infinity. And, um, and I think that there's a... So you could say it's a genus zero branch covering where there's like no branching at infinity. Or, what, or like trivial branching at infinity? Is that what the one blue dot? It, it might be called like uh, totally branched at infinity. You know what I mean? It's like as branched as possible. No. Oh. Right? It's got, I mean, that confuses me too, but right, I mean, that, right, that, that reminds me of, what do they call that in number theory? They talk about unramified things and they talk about totally ramified things. I, I'm not sure I know what the definitions are exactly, but I'm guessing that it's like this. I mean, this is really, really ramified at infinity because it's only got one, one blue point and that one blue point has to, you know, have a lot of branching at it to accommodate all these sheets, all these many sheets. Uh, so let's see. Okay. So there's just one, so on the branched cover, there's just one point over the point infinity in the base. Is that what? This one blue circle means. Just say that again. I, I almost followed, but say it again. <laughs> uh, up on the branched cover, yes, there's one point over infinity on the base. That's right. That's okay. right. Uh huh. So my friend Simon, like I, I, so I think I said it right. That you know that there's yes, there's just this one special blue point. I mean, it's special because there is only one, you know, uniqueness makes things special. Um, and yes, and, and it lives on a genus zero thing. But my son, friend Simon had to point out to me what's the real secret explanation, I think, for why people like this flavor of example. And the explanation, I think, is that, um, is that that's maybe pretty much exactly, very close to exactly what you need for the Bellier projection to basically be a polynomial. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I always get confused about when you have a polynomial, what's the branching at infinity? Because from looking at the polynomial, right, you sort of don't, the roots that's right are really visible that's right that's right well you can make them very visible that's so, right uh, I, I i've had this confusion too i'm not sure i think we might have had this confusion together in discussion but quite possibly but so, but, but we've yeah. probably gotten over it mostly so you're saying well let's see yeah uh can you state that as a 
facts of some sort that you're saying something like that? But yes, let me try. Can I, can I try? Sure, yeah. So first of all, randomly pick one of the Well, I will try to say it's a fact, but let me ramble on a bit before I try to state the fact, okay? Okay. So, um, first of all, you mentioned trees. So yes, this is a tree here. We, it, you know, in, when, we, when we had the simpler drawing, you could see that it was a tree, um, but you could argue about whether it was a rooted tree or not, right? I mean, you have some choice about where to pick the root. Um, but it's right. It's clear that in this example, I intended for the root to be right there in the middle, the green dot in the middle. And that's connected with the idea that when you use that as the root, then this is a two-stage tree. You know, a two-stage planar tree or something like that. Two-stage circular planar tree or something like that. Uh -huh. That. Um, Yeah, right. That the you know the if you follow branch or any, anywhere going outwards from the green dot, you hit a leaf in at most two steps, oh. and so it's those two stage trees. It's it's those two stage trees with a, a root with a chosen root. Those are the ones that correspond to this example that correspond to this kind of story that I was talking about, where you have one big cycle, which is, you know, going around the periphery. And then you have the sped up version of it. And that sped up version of it, you know, just kind of cuts the big cycle into these shorter cycles. Mm -hmm. And you can see the shorter cycles in the picture, right? You see the AB is over in the Northwest. The CDE is sort of in the Northeast. And then the FG is in the south in this example. Um, yeah. So, yes. So, right. I just, I just wanted to emphasize that this flavor of picture corresponds to this flavor of permutation pair. Um, this two-stage tree, two-stage rooted tree, that flavor of child's drawing, that corresponds to this particular flavor of permutation pair. And then, but your question was about, right, how do the trees- I was hoping- Correspond to the polynomials. Right. So, so let, me, let me try to say that. So since we already chose a root, let's christen that as zero. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Let's christen that as zero, not just zero downstairs, but zero upstairs. Okay. Okay. And then let's, we may as well christen one upstairs as being one of the red dots that's connected to zero. Um, mm -hmm. So let's have it be this one, I guess. Right. A is kind of the favorite letter in the, in the alphabet because it's the first letter. Yeah. So let's use the A thing to, to, to say that that's zero and that's one. And of course, infinity is infinite. The, on, the only one that goes to infinity. The, the only point upstairs that goes to infinity down, that goes to downstairs infinity is the thing that we call upstairs infinity. Yeah. And- um, Okay. Yeah, I, I, right, and, and my color is a little bit pale for those labels, but hopefully you can see them. And you're still connected, right? Yep, I'm okay. still here. And, yeah, I'm still here. Okay, so right by the so the the, the right, I just kind of uh, uh, excised that triple transitivity flab, right? Triple transitivity flag. Flab. <laughs> flab. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. you know, as soon as you, you can pick, you can take any three distinct points on the Riemann sphere that you want or on any projective line and christen those as infinity, 
zero and one, and that gives you a whole coordinate system. Uh -huh. uh, and I guess that coordinate system is called the cross ratio or something like that. The cross ratio of the fourth point with the three mm -hmm. points that give you the coordinate system, the naming system. And so, so at this point, right? This at, at this point, we now have a specific holomorphic map from the right by by, na by naming those points those by naming those three points upstairs we now have a specific this child's drawing is giving us a specific holomorphic map from the complex affine line to the complex affine line uh -huh. and another name for that is uh well maybe i should say it's a surjective one or something like that I mean, well that's what i'm trying to say you know, I'm, I'm trying to avoid the little exceptions, like the thing that takes everything to infinity or something like that. But uh, I want to say that these are the polynomials, basically, with some perhaps, you know, minor exceptions, very minor exceptions. All these, yeah, all these wrappings are, I guess, the non-constant polyno polynomials or something like that. Um, at least that's what Simon <laughs> suggested to me, and I think he's correct. Because you know, and what we're saying is, is, is right. It, what, what is he saying? He's saying that a polynomial is the same thing as a rational function that only takes infinity to infinity, or something. Okay, that's. I think that that's true? the sentence that I was. Yeah. <laughs> looking for. Well, maybe. that's what he told me. That's what he told me. I think it's true. Something very much like that is true. So in general, you could have a rational function, but a rational function would, with a non, with a serious denominator, would equal infinity at some points other than infinity. So that's right, right? You know, up to multiplicative normalization, you can just represent a rational function by its poles and zeros with multiplicities. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so by the way, yeah, is there any? Let's see. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so you get it. Ah, let's see. I'm, you said you'd, we get a tree because we have a genus zero branched covering where there's just one point over infinity. You said that a while ago. Yes, and I did I'm, say that, and I think it's probably true. And I think if you just think about it, you'll probably either agree that it's true or else show me why I'm wrong. But yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> so then, so if that's true, I'm not going to try to think too hard about whether it's true, but if it's true, then those are the polynomials is what you just said now. Yes, that's what I think. That's what I think. Again, I think that I'm okay. hoping this is all hanging together. Okay. And so, I, I, but, 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 yeah, yeah, but this particular game that you did right now is only giving us the two stage trees. That's right. So, That's we're right. somehow, so somehow or other, you're getting some class of polynomials. That's right. That's right. It'd be nice to know exactly what class of polynomials this is. That's right. Uh -huh. But, yeah. but from the fact that I seem to find this flavor of picture on the textbook frontispieces, uh, it sort of looks like other people are also interested in whatever this class of polynomials is. But but the fact that they're polynomials, I think, makes it easier to work with them when you're doing, you know, some nice simple algebra and stuff. Uh -huh. And yeah, so I'm going to try and do some. So right, you know, we're going to. I guess it looks like I'm aiming to quit by nine. Well, nine thirty my time, which is like twenty minutes from now. But um, uh, if you can do it sooner, I'll be happier. Today is like a really weird. Day. All right. Okay. 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 I'll. I'll. I'll you know, it's, it's getting really close already. But um, yeah. uh, we'll. Yeah. Yeah. We we may be able to quit a little bit earlier than that. But I, I'm just trying to organize my thoughts here about what I would be doing if we had a little bit more time. So I want to very quickly get a few even smaller examples than this, which will be useful examples. See, what we want is we want raw material. We want more raw examples of children's drawings that we can use for practicing on 
to actually obtain the specific polynomial. Actually, you know, right? We want so we want to look at a drawing and we want to write down the polynomial. Oh, great. Um, I, I, we can come very close to doing that, I think. I think we can come very close to doing that. At least I have an idea. And I, again, it could be that there's some very well-known very well known algorithms for doing this, but I'm using my method of not quite reading the textbooks. I'm just kind of guessing. Um, so I think that, well, that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to, okay. we're going to try to take examples like this and just as best as we can, try to read off a polynomial from them. But, okay. um, but, but, but when we say read off, you know, the process may be a little bit involved, but we'll see how it goes. But we're going to, we're going to apply it to examples like this, except slightly simpler than this. Uh -huh. Basically, because when I tried to apply it to slightly more complicated examples, the algebra got really annoying. So let me draw some simpler examples and just say a couple of things about the examples. And then we'll at least start to think about the process of turning this into a polynomial. So let me uh, go down here a little bit. And so let me draw a couple of permutation pairs here. Damn, I wish I understood how this goddamn software works. What's it doing? Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's take let's take our permuted set to be five elements. And so we have the long cycle and then we have the sped up cycle. Okay, so this, if I remember correctly, we were using this for the red and this for the green. And um, so here you can see that the concrete group that we're getting is five back. Mm -hmm. And um, the child's drawing, uh, it's got that blue pointed infinity. It's got the green root of the tree in the middle. The, the, the tree in the middle just has two branches coming out of it, right? It's all right, wrong color. Uh, it, it just has the, the two branches coming out of it, the A branch and the B branch. So um, it's like, you know, A and B, and we need red vertexes at the end of each of those. And then what does A have? Well, so I think A is all by itself. So there's nothing over there. And B is, uh, I think it's, you know, B, well, sorry, I wrote it in the wrong place. B, C, D, E, something like that. And I have to put the green ends of those vertexes. In. So I think it looks like that. But on the other hand, right, there's another example that you could do, which would be. Um, Can you just write that third permutation that's. Yes, yes. Explicit. Yes. So it should be, if, if I remember correctly, if I'm not screwing up, it's the, you know, you do the red first and then you do the green. And, you know, that combination is really going around the blue clockwise or counterclockwise or something like that. And um, it is, I'm sorry, I wrote this, I wrote, I wrote this backwards, right? I wrote, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. I totally screwed that up. So it's, it's right, it's the composite one that's supposed to be right. I, I wish I had more control over these conventions so I could get it right the first time, but it's, it's the composite one actually that is A, B, C, D, E. And the one at top is actually the two separate things. Mm -hmm. So again, let me just practice, okay. let me just check this one, okay? So at the top, I'm trying to, I'm trying to act out the composite now. So at the top, A goes to, A, right, at the top, nothing happens to A. Uh -huh. And at the bottom, A goes to B. So yes, A went to B in the composite. And B at the top goes to C, and then nothing happens to C. So yes, B went to C, just like we wanted. And then 
We want C to go to D. Let's see if it does. So C goes to D at top, and then nothing happens to D. So yes, C did go to D. So it looks like it's working. Okay. And and again, you could you can check in the picture, right? That when you clockwise rotate an edge around its red end, that should be this permutation in the first row. That you know, if you uh -huh. yes, if you rotate A around its red end, it just comes back 360 degrees. Right. Um, whereas if you rotate around B, you're only going 90 degrees to the next one. So okay. there's actually a four cycle there. Yeah. So this is a good example of, again, this is how you get five bang. I, that's the fact that this is five bang. And again, you can do this for 17 bang, right? Thing. There's, there's an interesting family of examples here, um, which I haven't really read people talking about too much, but presumably they do explain what, what's interesting or non-interesting non about it. So I, I just want to do uh, another example that's very similar here, um, which is you could do it five bang again. Sorry, <laughs> that's too, too lumpy. Let me make it a little bit. Okay. And then, that's still pretty lumpy. But um, uh, again, a green root in the middle, two, bran two branches, and red ends. But this time, instead of breaking it up in, in five equals one plus four, I'm just going to break it up into five equals perhaps three. Sorry, Marco. Uh, five equals three plus two. Mm -hmm. So this one would be uh, <laughs> uh, 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 let's try A, B, I hope I'm getting this right. A, B, C, D, E. And so this one at the top would be A, B, C, and D, E, this one would be A, D, and this one would be A, B, C, D, E. And um, again, it, it still mystifies me that this is telling me that I'll get alphabetical order if I go around the periphery. It doesn't look like it would do that, but because of the good triangles versus the evil triangles, it will work out somehow. That if you just go straight clockwise around the periphery, you'll get the alphabetical order. Um, so yeah, this is uh, red, this is green, and this is red composed with green. And yeah, so right to, to me, it's interesting that these right. You could well let me finish drawing in the green ed, green ends yeah. here. So you can clearly see just by looking at the pictures that these are two different children's drawings. They're not right, even in their uh -huh. gross. Yeah, <laughs> um, the gross combinatorial structure, whatever way the the, the graphs are are not isomorphic, even as non-planar graphs, they're not isomorphic. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, they're giving the same concrete group, five bang. It's just two different presentations of five five bang that are non-equivalent. I guess I guess meaning they're not conjugate presentations or something like that. I don't want to worry about that right now. But it's it's interesting that uh, you know, these are distinct children's drawings. It's the same concrete group, five bang. But even these examples were too annoying for me to try to figure out the algebra of the polynomial. So let me try there's to go. some weird thing, by the way, about how, it's not all that weird, but there's something about how the appearance of S5 in solving the quintic yes. shows up in terms of like, uh, covers of the Riemann's branch covers and branch covers of the Riemann sphere with, with, uh, yeah. I think well, that's what's right. weird about it is that there's like the, there's the sort of algebraic 
well, I don't know if it's weird or not, but there's 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 the there's the appearance of the Galois group S five, but then you can also see it. You can also it's also connected to like a group of deck transformations of some branch cover of the Riemann sphere. I think that's right. I think it's I, I think. On good days, I might almost understand this myself, but I, I have a feeling, you know, Klein's old book is probably, but Klein's book on the icosahedron is probably about this. And, yeah, so I'm, well, I'm and, wondering. And, 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 you know, and it's discussed in terms of modular forms and stuff. What were you going to say? So, like, are you going to get quintic polynomials from these examples if you? I, I think so, but I, I, again, even these examples were already too much trouble for me to. Figure yeah, out. Well, so I'm, I'm going to have even ridic more ridiculously simple examples, but those, and I mean, we're going to quit really soon here, but yeah, but let me draw this other even more ridiculously simple example. And the, the question that you're asking will probably be addressed right. to some extent. By you're going to either do a quartic, a cubic, or a quadrat. <laughs> cubic, I think. Uh, uh -huh. So what am I trying to draw here? Uh, it's like... Uh, a B C and then A C is equal to A B C, I think. Yeah, so I think this is the red one. This is the green one, I think. And this is the red followed by the green. And um, the picture looks like what? Point in infinite. I didn't like that. <laughs> Circle to close. It. So what have we got? We've got the green root in the middle. We've got the two branches, which I guess are A and B. And the red endpoints. And now- so Why does the like, green have A and I'm getting, why does the green have A and B coming out of it? Whereas you've got this thing AC or- It's probably a mistake, it's probably a mistake. Let's try your way. <laughs> Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just going up the colors here. Yeah. And then- C, okay. And then this is A and B here. Yeah. And that's kind of it. I think that's the whole Charles drawing. So let's try this example. Let's, let's at least start to think of it, think about it, but, but we're gonna try to quit really, really soon. So, um, I mean, I may start to panic because I'm trying to do it quickly here, but basically we're going to quit very, very soon. And then, <laughs> and then the next time we'll try to pick up right at this spot or very close to this spot. But, but let me just think about it for a second. So I'm going to have this polynomial F. We have this polynomial F. And what am I trying to say? It's going to be, okay. It, it, yeah, it, it's going to be f of z equals uh, g times z cubed plus h times z squared plus j times z plus k. Because we're pretty sure it's going to be a cubic polynomial. So we're just going to try to write down equations which express all the information that we, all the sensible information that we think we have about this function. So, you know, you have all sorts of things like uh, F of, well, let's see, did we pick out where infinity, is? well, it, we picked out where infinity is, but did we pick out where zero is? We picked out where zero is. 
I guess we pick out one to be right there, I guess. And then maybe I'll give names to these other ones. So let's see. Uh, DHJ, maybe I'll call this L over here and M over there. So do you see what I'm saying? I'm saying that we have these variables L and M, which are the coordinates of these endpoints L and M. And then we also have variables G and H and J and K. Again, that's so nope. pale, but maybe you can see that. Yeah, I'm still here, by the way. <laughs> okay. Yep. And um, we're going to write down, right, we have six variables. We're going to write down all the equations that we can think of. I think we're going to be able to think of six equations. And that suggests that, you know, we're going to get just a discrete, finite set of solutions of this system of equations. Okay. Can I and, tell you some equations? <laughs> yeah. yeah yes, nice. yes, you can. Go ahead. Just to see if I know what's going on. Sure. So like the basic ones are like f of one is one. That's like a normalization thing. Sure, sure. That's like g plus h plus j plus k equals one. Okay. Well, I'm not even gonna. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And then and then f of zero is zero. And we don't even need to say f of infinity is infinity. That's automatic. And so then the interesting ones. Yes. Um, well, some interesting ones are f of l equals zero. Yes, yes, yes. But and since we're, of, since we're, yes. <laughs> yeah, and, f of, and f of m equals one. Yes, yes, that's that's all correct, yes. But you see how we're going to get six of these constraints. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think no. you gave one constraint for each of these dots, I think, just by the value. Yeah, that's all I know how to do. But for the two ones in the middle, these right, the, the two endpoints aren't really branch points, uh, aren't really branch, you know, so they're not critical points. But the two in the middle are critical points. So that's actually two, but they're only first order critical points or something. So that's, that's the six constraints right there, right? The, they're first order critical oh. points. Oh, oh. So, so that's, you're telling me that F prime of one. Is that's what I think. Point. That's what I think. I mean, I, this was wild guessing, but that's what I think I'm telling you. And those six constraints sort of balance out our six variables, which is very suggestive. I think it always balances out like that. So let's just, you know, it's really late. Let's quit. But yeah, I don't want to start solving six linear equations right now. But, yes, yes. I mean, but you but can see where cool. we're going. You can see where we're going. Why it's going to be fun when we start picking uh -huh. this up next time. Okay? Yeah, and that seems like a pretty systematic, an instance of a pretty systematic thing. So. That's what I think. But my wild guess is that the, we're going to get, you know, semi-unwanted extra solutions. Not too many, just a discrete family of extra solutions. And that's going to be my, my wild conjecture is that that is the Groton D. Teichmuller orbit. Mm -hmm. of the child's drawing, you know, these extras, there gonna be some, I think uh -huh. some, I think if you're, if you're in the same Grotendieck-Teichmuller Grot 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 orbit, I think you can get the same system of equations. That's my wild guess. Don't, don't quote me on that. Okay. Okay. So thanks a lot. And I'll see you. Like, um, I, I, did we really figure out the regular meeting time? I don't know. We'll check it. Well, in this, now. this meeting time is, is normally, Pretty good. Um, Todd it, has moved yeah. his meeting time with me, yes, uh, so that it will be just after when this meeting would end, if we had gone on for the full two hours. So that that might work. That'll work. I'll be that'll be a workout for me, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> It's just at this particular time after meeting him, then I also have to give a talk and then I also have to meet right. somebody else. So today's sort of crazy, but it's not going to be that bad. I hope. Right. I mean, there are possibilities. I might be able to test it slightly different hours, slightly different day, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, yeah. thanks a lot. And uh, I'll see you. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay. Okay. Bye. Yeah.